Well, hello, hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. A couple videos ago, I mentioned something about how the food you consume can affect your hormones, and I got a lot of requests to make a video about this, so I'm making a video about it. There's this big old myth out there that weight loss comes purely down to a calorie deficit and that balancing your hormones or doing anything to support your health is not going to directly help you lose weight. It is not going to help you be in that calorie deficit in order to lose fat. Here's the fact. Yes, you do technically need to be in a calorie deficit to lose fat. It is literal physics. But the other fact is that balancing your hormones is going to make your body overall healthier. It is going to make your metabolism function more efficiently. It is going to help you burn more calories and thus, if you just focus on balancing your hormones and you keep your calorie intake the same and your calorie expenditure via exercise and movement the same, you could still end up in a calorie deficit and lose fat without actively putting yourself in a calorie deficit. This is why I always, always, always recommend putting health before weight loss. Healing a chronic illness is also going to improve your metabolic efficiency and make it possible for you to potentially lose fat without, again, restricting calories or increasing your movement. Here's that fact put more simply. The body is a lot more complex than a simple scale on which one side is the food you intake and the other side is the calories burned through movement and activity. The reality is that so many different things can affect the different sides of the scale. What you put on one side of the scale can affect what is on the other side of the scale. What I'm trying to get at here is that if you have hormone imbalances, if you have any PMS symptoms, you more than likely have hormone imbalances. By the way, PMS is common, but it is not normal. It is a symptom that something is happening in your body that isn't optimal. You should be able to get through your entire menstrual cycle without pain, without mood swings, without feeling horrible, without having all of these negative symptoms associated with having a period. So in this video, what I want to focus on is specifically the sex hormones. So estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Obviously there's more hormones in the body that can also affect your weight like cortisol, insulin, leptin, ghrelin, etc, etc, etc. You can use your nutrition to help optimize those which will help optimize your health and thus help optimize your fat loss efforts if that is what you are trying to accomplish. If you're not trying to lose fat, you're trying to gain muscle, this is still really helpful. Like none of this is specifically for weight loss, it's just for optimizing your hormones. So honestly, if you're trying to build muscle, this is also really helpful because having optimal hormones also makes that easier. And not gonna lie, this is a massive topic. So I cannot cover everything in one video. What I'm gonna do is just take you through my full day of eating and explain how what I choose to put in my body affects my hormones and why I choose to put certain things in my body to support my hormones. So with that said, comment down below if you do have any hormonal imbalances or symptoms of hormonal imbalances. I will also leave in the description my top three, four book recommendations for anyone with a uterus or anyone who knows anyone with a uterus. These books take a much deeper dive into the nuances of all of this, and if you have like specific questions, specific problems that you want to address, these books are really gonna help you. So I'll leave that down in the description, but let's start with the first thing I do every day to support my hormones, and that is take a few key supplements. Get them out of my little supplements cabinet. We got, we got a lot going on here. Don't let this overwhelm you. Just gonna grab a few key guys from here. Got this guy over here. Good. So Maca, the Ned Balance Blend, and Vitex are the three supplements that I am taking every single morning to support my hormones. Most people know Maca is just an adaptogen that is well known for its ability to help balance hormones. I just accidentally threw the lid across my desk. That was not intentional, so I take one of those. Vitex is something that I read about in almost every single book that I was reading about the menstrual cycle, and it has a lot of positive benefits, especially for supporting healthy progesterone production, which is really key, especially in the latter half of your cycle when progesterone is supposed to be elevated. A lot of people find that Vitex can help with PMS symptoms, but again, like if you're looking for specific recommendations, check out those books. Work with someone one-on-one. -on -one. I cannot diagnose you without having talked to you ever in my life. This is just what I'm doing. And then the third thing that I'm taking is the Ned Balance Blend. I've told you guys about this a million and one times, but I just... 
it needs a mention in this video because it's all about hormones and I absolutely freaking love it and it makes a huge difference for me. This is a full spectrum CBD oil with a bunch of different botanicals in it that also support hormone regulation. CBD in itself has the potential to have pervasive beneficial benefits within the body because all of the systems in the body have endocannabinoid receptors in them. So phytocannabinoids from the hemp plant can go into the body and affect literally every system of the body and help balance every system of the body. It always sounds like all of the claims and the benefits of CBD oil are way too good to be true, but if you look into the science of it, like, it makes sense. Is it gonna cure the plague? Probably not. But can it help with hormone balance, with sleep issues, with anxiety and stress? and recovery from chronic illness and all of that, yeah, it can help. So I was taking Ned's just like plain full spectrum hemp extract for quite a while. I started, oh wow, was that like a year ago? I've been taking it for like a year. And since coming off of hormonal birth control, this has been a supplement that I have found to be very, very helpful in re-regulating my hormones as I go through basically a hormone withdrawal and detox. My post birth control experience has been relatively painless. Assuming I get my period in the next like four to six days, I will have had four consecutive like regular cycles. Four? Five? Honestly, I've lost track at this point. <laughs> Basically, we're doing really good, and this has been something that I have really felt is supporting my body through this process. So if you are working on balancing your hormones, highly, highly recommend the Hormone Balance Blend from Ned. Ned is the best company out there when it comes to how they source and extract their hemp. Y'all know how picky I am about the supplements that I choose to put in my body, and they are just like top quality. So highly recommend you check it out. I will leave a link down in the description box below. If you use my code fit and nerdy, you will get yourself 15% off your order or 20% off of a subscription to their North Star membership, which gets you a whole ton of other perks in itself. make sure to incorporate into my diet every single day is a probiotic rich food. You guys know my love for kombucha, so usually it is a kombucha in the morning. I just love having kombucha first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. It's like my favorite thing. It makes me feel great. So that's usually what I do, not necessarily what you have to do. Anything with probiotics is going to be very good for your gut and maintaining healthy amounts of gut flora is so important for estrogen metabolism. So there's actually two big ways in which having healthy gut flora promotes balanced estrogen. The first is that your liver processes through your estrogen and sends it to your gut to get it out of your body. You literally poop out estrogen. But if your gut is off, if you're constipated, if you're not having one nice healthy poop every single day, you're not pooping out the estrogen that you need to. And if it stays in your gut for too long, it goes back into the body and you end up with estrogen dominance. And then within your gut, you have the estrobolum, which is basically just the bacteria in your gut that specialize at metabolizing estrogen. When your gut microbiome is happy and healthy, the estrobolum can perfectly efficiently regulate the amount of estrogen that it's processing through. But if there's inflammation, if your gut flora is off, if something disrupts the estrobolum, then it's not going to be able to regulate estrogen and it can regulate it in either direction so you could end up with too much or not enough. So basically consuming probiotics regularly is super helpful. I usually have kombucha but if I don't I'll have a little bit of coconut yogurt or I'll have some sauerkraut. That's usually my go-to. And then you may have noticed and you may be proud of me. I I'm not having a coffee this morning. I told you guys two weeks ago that I was leaning a little heavily on the caffeine just because I got a really good hot chocolate mix and was making delicious mochas. And I was like, this is the best thing ever. But I ran out of the hot chocolate mix. <laughs> and for a couple days after I was like, coffee still sounds good. I'm gonna have some coffee. But the last few days, I have stopped drinking the coffee. And here's the thing, there's a little, quite a few potential negative side effects of drinking regular caffeine. You wanna learn about the overall thing? There's a really cool article that I'll link down in the description called The Caffeine Cult. If you feel pain in your chest at the idea of giving up your coffee for the day, I recommend reading it. So there's a lot of reasons that I wanted to just quit caffeine and kind of let myself go back to my normal caffeine intake, which is like two to three cups of coffee a month maybe one to two a week max. But one of the big reasons for me right now is as I am still kind of focusing on my hormone balance, regular caffeine consumption can disrupt hormone balance. Mostly because caffeine stimulates cortisol. Symptoms of high cortisol include storing more fat in your abdominal region, having more cravings for sugary and salty foods, being quick to anger, having mood swings, depression, low libido. Basically, it's 
not fun. But also there are various studies to indicate that caffeine can directly influence estrogen levels. There's quite a few studies on this, so feel free to look at some others on your own, but one in particular that I found interesting was they looked at women from different ethnic backgrounds and looked at how caffeine directly affected them, and it actually affected different ethnic groups in different ways, but it still had some amount of impact on like everyone. I could rant about caffeine for like days, so we're not gonna get into that, but the key takeaway is that caffeine can impact your hormones. And if your hormones aren't balanced, caffeine's probably not helping. I'm sorry, I'm really not sorry. It's a drug, it's a, it's a drug. We're gonna stop ranting now, okay gonna make some breakfast. Let's let's go eat some food and then we'll talk about what's in my food and how it's helping with my hormones. Yeah, cool. Let's do it. Speaking of books all about hormones, I literally have Beyond the Pill sitting on my desk right here. Great book. Highly recommend. Anyway, first meal of the day. It looks so delicious, I'm so excited. I have some egg and arugula tacos of sorts and three chicken and I think apple sausages. This is the Siete almond flour tortillas, so delicious. Love them so much. I have three eggs, a little bit of cashew cheese in the eggs, some red onion and some zucchini. Threw some arugula down, put the eggs on top, put some more arugula on top because you can never have too much arugula. And then just, yeah, three the sausages. A few red pepper flakes too. It's so good. You guys know me, I already loved starting my day with eggs. Like it's been one of my go-to breakfasts for so long. But making your first meal high in fat and good quality protein is really key at regulating your blood sugar throughout the day. And your blood sugar can actually impact your hormones. For example, some studies suggest that improving your insulin sensitivity can drastically increase your progesterone levels in people with luteal phase defects. And this isn't to say you shouldn't include carbs in your breakfast. I don't really have many just because I like to have protein and fat for breakfast. Like it makes me feel really good. But if you do have carbs in your breakfast, you wanna make sure it's balanced out with a good fat and protein. Not only are eggs a really good source of protein and fat, but they're also a great source of cholesterol. And the thing with hormones is that they are made from cholesterol. Cholesterol is necessary for the production of progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, thyroid hormone, et cetera, et cetera. People were very scared about dietary cholesterol causing heart disease for a very long time, but that has been pretty thoroughly debunked in recent years. Studies show that there actually is no link between dietary cholesterol and bad blood cholesterol when you account for all other variables. So eat your eggs, get your cholesterol, get your protein, get your healthy fats, get all of those amazing vitamins. Eggs are like nature's multi vitamin like eggs are freaking great man they're just they're great speaking of which i'm gonna finish my egg tacos now before they get cold two hours later all right i went to the gym smashed out a pretty darn heavy lower body workout like it felt real good i was not expecting to have good energy later in the day i like just because i usually lift in the morning but i crushed it not gonna lie Came home, made some dinner, and for dinner, I ended up having some roasted veggies. I just roasted up some sweet potato, broccoli, and cauliflower, and then I had some ground beef, beef boost, which is in fact 20% ground liver, and then topped that with some shredded blackened Brussels sprouts and pesto, and it was freaking delicious, if I may say so myself. If you've watched my What I Eat In A Days before, you know this is a very standard dinner for me. Roasted vegetables, some kind of protein, some kind of saucy thing. It's my go-to. But not only do I like it and enjoy it and it makes me feel good, it also has a lot of great things in it that are good for balancing hormones. The first is cruciferous vegetables with the cauliflower, the Brussels sprouts, and the broccoli. And I should mention also bitter greens. I had some arugula earlier. I'm pretty sure that's a bitter green. Both cruciferous vegetables and bitter greens support the liver in boosting estrogen metabolism. There's a lot of data to suggest that it's the indole 3 carbonyl that is in cruciferous vegetables that helps boost estrogen metabolism through the liver. The second thing is fat. Even though I haven't had any like specific sources of fat, like I haven't added avocado, I did throw a little bit of olive oil into stuff, but I haven't, you know, intentionally added fat. I've gotten 100 grams of fat so far today. I've been tracking just to be able to tell you guys. And eating fat is so, so crucial for hormones because hormones are made from fat. Like if you do not intake fat, you will not be able to synthesize hormones. As just one example of how important this is, there was a study that looked at levels of testosterone and fat intake. And what they found is that with increased fat intake, testosterone increased, which reduced the risk of anovulation, which is where you have a menstrual cycle and don't ovulate. Another 
other thing my dinner was full of was fiber. So much fiber. Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, all the good fiber. Fiber, like we talked about, is really good for your gut flora. It feeds all those little good bugs that you put in your gut when you consumed the probiotics before. This is going to promote healthy estrogen balance for all the previous reasons talked about. The next thing in my dinner and also in my breakfast was zinc. There's a lot of zinc in red meat and eggs. And zinc is so crucial in so many different hormonal processes. It increases follicle stimulating hormone, which supports healthy ovulation. It also supports a healthy amount of progesterone. It balances out testosterone. If your testosterone is too high in men, it's actually really, really good for supporting sperm motility and sperm health. If you're not consuming enough zinc, basically it's gonna be a problem. And then the last thing that I wanna call particular attention to with my dinner is the fact that it included organ meats. Like I said, the ground beef that I use is 20% liver. I go through one to two packs a week, so I usually get probably three to five ounces of liver per week. Organ meats are like the most nutrient dense foods on the planet. I know I say eggs are nature's multivitamin, but honestly, it's organ meats. Like that is, you can overdose on organ meats because of how nutrient dense they are. That's how nutrient dense they are. So I'm not gonna sit here and go through literally every micronutrient because that would take forever, but one of the vitamins that is very high in organ meats that is also very crucial for hormones is B6. B6 is involved in estrogen metabolism and can easily become depleted if you are estrogen dominant. It's been shown to have some progesterone-like effects and help decrease estrogen and boost progesterone. And then just speaking of nutrient density, as you've probably seen, my diet is very, very nutrient dense. Like almost everything that I add in there is is packed full of nutrients. I don't waste calories on things that aren't going to give my body things that nourish it. And making sure you're getting in adequate intake of all vitamins and minerals is super, super crucial for your hormone health. So aiming for variety and diversity in your diet is really, really key. Obviously, pretty much all nutrients are gonna play some parts, even if it's not a direct impact on the hormones, but some of the most important vitamins and minerals that you wanna pay attention to are B2, B6, B12, C, E, D, A, magnesium, selenium, zinc, and folate, L-arginine, iodine, and iron, and there's, there's actually a ton, but that's a good start to name a few. So it is bedtime. I have showered, I'm all cozy, ready to crawl into bed, but I just poured myself a glass of magnesium, specifically Ned's Mellow Magnesium, which by the time I post this video, I think should officially be launched with like, the actual product, not just the samples. I take magnesium every single night before bed because it is so critical in like hundreds of different bodily functions, like not just hormone related, but like you will die without magnesium. It is a very, very, very critical mineral. It's essential to adrenal health, which is in turn essential to healthy hormones. It's also like critical in one of the steps of the processes of synthesizing all of the different hormones. So if you're deficient in magnesium, it's gonna cause you a lot of issues. It helps you sleep better, which helps you with hormone balance, like, is one of the few things that I think almost everyone would benefit from taking because a lot of people are deficient in it and a lot of people notice drastic benefits from adding it into their diet. I usually take the magnesium from Natural Stacks and I absolutely love that one too, but I'm super stoked for Ned to officially launch their magnesium because it also has GABA and L-theanine in it, which are really good at supporting sleep, supporting calmness, just like overall supporting the body. Not to like give Ned two shout outs in one video, but honestly they deserve it. Like I, I love, I love their stuff. So I'll link that down in the description box too. So those are all the things that I incorporated intentionally today in order to help my hormone balance. Now this is by no means an exhaustive list. Like there are so many other things that I could have talked about. This video could be 10 hours long. It could be an entire year long course in college. Like there's a lot to go over. Before I sign off, there's two things that I wanted to touch on that I'm actively not incorporating into my diet to also support my hormone balance. And the first one is alcohol. I told you guys at the beginning of the year that one of the healthy habits that I wanted to start implementing for 2021 was reducing my alcohol intake. Just cause it was never bad, like it was never high. It was just higher than I like it to be, which is very, very minimal. And I think I've had one one alcohol 
all of January, so we're doing good there. Not really much of an alcohol drinker, so honestly, cutting it out wasn't a huge deal for me. But basically, alcohol is literally poison for your body. Like, it's it's poison. There's no way around it. It's just straight, straight poison. And as such, has very deleterious effects on the body. Some of which include negatively impacting your hormone balance. Main thing is that it drastically slows estrogen metabolism, which means it gives you estrogen dominance temporarily. Studies show that the more alcohol you consume, the more likely you are to experience menstrual cycle irregularities. Even moderate alcohol consumption has been linked in studies to higher estrogen levels and lower progesterone levels. And one study even showed elevated estrogen, testosterone, and luteinizing hormone after one alcohol, one beverage changed women's hormones. Research has shown that consuming alcohol can make you 45% more likely to experience PMS right. symptoms. And if you have an average of one drink a day, it goes up to 79% more likely to experience PMS symptoms. So if you have PMS symptoms, consider cutting alcohol for like a little bit. Let your body heal, reintroduce it, see how you do. But like maybe just, you know, not drink for a little bit. Give it a try. See what happens. And then the last thing that I actively try not to consume too much of is just processed food and sugar, just cause it's not great for you in general. It's honestly not something I particularly enjoy consuming, especially considering how I usually feel after I consume it. Although I will say I did just eat, I was gonna show you, hang on. This chocolate bar is all gone. I think I had about two thirds of it when I opened it. So I consumed a decent amount of sugar, like 20 grams of sugar. But in general, processed foods and refined sugars are very inflammatory, which causes all kinds of issues, including disrupting your hormones. They feel like inflammation and how it messes with your body is fairly straightforward, hopefully. I don't know. I'm tired. I feel like I sound drunk. I'm just I'm tired. It's very late. I need to go to bed. So that is it. Gonna finish up the magnesium, brush the old teeth season, hit the hay. <laughs> if you have any questions about any of this, if you want me to expand on anything, if you want me to talk about something tangential to this, let me know down in the comments below. If you learned something, also let me know what you learned in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up because it really does support me and my channel. I really appreciate it. Please share this video with your friends, your family, and your neighbors. If you want to see more videos from me all about health and fitness and hormones, you can check them out over here. To see future videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the little notification bell so you get notified when I post a video. Check the link in the description for all of the amazing Ned products to help you balance your hormones, and I will see you very soon with a video all about abs. Very exciting abs. Okay. Bye. Good night.